Hi everyone, I'm John Williams. And I'm Rory Williams. And we got a really special tasting for you here. I'm really fired up about this. Three wines from the 1993 vintage. Dad, this goes back a little ways. It goes 27 years. I mean, what? you were nine years old for goodness sakes. I think it's what- Just, just coming into my winemaking prime. I actually years. have a picture of you. We may put it online. Of uh, of you and Kyder stirring a bucket out in front of the crush pad. I, re yeah. I remember this because you, you know my dad and my and my mom uh, you know started the winery and they were so busy making these wines and this was still Frog's Leap was still in its early years. You're picking this up in the middle of harvest from school and having to go make wine. Yeah. And I think we you know we'd come to the winery and be like, Dad, Mom, go, you know what can we do? Can we help no. with harvest? And you finally said, Sure. Here's a bucket of water. I need you to stir this bucket of water. It's, you did a, we, we, you did a fabulous job. You dutifully <laughs> stirred that bucket of water. And, you know, yeah. So I really feel like I had something to do with the 93. You did, and we got some of the best stirred water we've ever had. And, you know, <laughs> I think your brother, who was two years younger, said, why are we stirring this bucket of water? <laughs> but, you know, this is, this is the beauty of older wines. And, and I would ask all of you who've had, who have these wines to try to, to put yourself back and think about because... 27 years is a long time to, for a wine to develop in a bottle. There are not that many wines that you just can count on, particularly Zinfandel, Merlot, and Cabernet Sauvignon side by side. So what are you, what are you smelling? This is the 1993 Zinfandel. So, Dad, this is a 100% uh, Zinfandel. Yeah. And a lot of this is coming off of the home ranch. Yep, The yep. Williams Ranch, uh, now Trey Saboris, uh, the first vineyard that we ever took organic. Yeah. Um, so this was first certified organic vineyard in Napa County. In okay. Napa County, yeah. I was nine. So what I remember about 1993 is my grandpa, your dad, coming yeah. out and building yeah. us a treehouse. Oh, that that's absolutely right. <laughs> well, these are remarkable wines because they tra they're a big part of Frog Sleep history in that these wines were made at the old frog farm, but bottled at the Red Barn. And so this was a this was this really important transition in the in the winery's history. So these wines were actually crushed and made at the frog farm, and, but before they were bottled, we were over at, uh, over at the Red Barn. So what yeah. you're telling me this, is this was an absolutely easy, totally oh. relaxing vintage <laughs> for you and no, no problems at all. None and yet, whatsoever. <laughs> what, 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 could, what could possibly go wrong with it? But vintage? you know, and it's, it's instructive to us to remember that the grapes don't know that there's all this stuff going on. They're, they're thinking about the sun and the air and the moisture content they have. And so they're here, they're hard work making these beautiful wines completely oblivious to the fact that we're having to move and do all this stuff and, and raise a family and so on. So it's one of the joys of wine is that it's such a natural, wonderful project. It, can, it can helps you right. keep you connected with the year as it's developing. And mm -hmm. we saw that a little bit of that this year as well. But it, Dad, I think the uh, the Zinfandel is drinking absolutely beautifully. This wine's got a ton of structure for a 100% yeah. Zinfandel, which nowadays uh, Frog Sleep Zins are going to contain a little bit of Petit Syrah, a little bit of Carignan, uh, adding some color and structure and acid into it. This wine is, has gone the distance with 100% Zinfandel. Well, in, in, in credit grade acidity, which you can taste in this wine, which is so critical uh, to a wine's development. Now, we poured these out in our glasses and let them air out just a little bit before we taste the wine, and I'm recommending uh, that to you all as well. And, and be very, very careful when you open these wines. The corks are gonna be frat. We get older wines, take a little extra care in their, in their bringing them to the table, opening them, bringing them to the table. Would you have decanted this? I think you definitely could, Deb, because I, I mean, I'm tasting this wine and this, uh, the Zin is just incredible. This is, for me, still has that absolute essence of Zinfandel, which is that core of red fruit. And really, Deb, this for me is all flowers at this point. This has yeah. got some of that violet character to it that is just pushing the, pushing the fruit in a whole different direction, kind of really eternalizing that fruit and making it something that it just doesn't feel like it's ever gonna leave this wine. And I don't know, it's unusual to, to think about this wine kind of just uh, having being so alive and being so vivacious after so many years in bottle, uh, this uh, the '93 is in is just absolutely incredible. Well, and look, you wouldn't. I mean, this would hold up to food. This has got the great acidity and everything else. I mean, typically a wine almost 30 years old, you would think, well, maybe handle it and have it with a little piece of cheese. At maybe best. a little bit of cheese, maybe on its own because it's so, and yeah. drink it quick because it's drink it fragile. quick because it's going to go away. Yeah, yeah. not <laughs> not a problem here. <laughs> yeah, this is going to stick around. Yeah, fabulous, fabulous. So fun.
<laughs> so fun. Dad, yeah. the 1993 Merlot, yeah. which this would have been just the fourth Merlot that we'd ever made. Yep, absolutely. We started in 1990 with the Truchard in the in Yacht Mill Vineyard, which I believe is the, is the core of these uh, wines. And, you know, Merlot was becoming very popular at, at that point, and uh, no one knew, knew exactly what it, Merlot was supposed to be, you know. We, we yeah. talk about now, that, you know, sometimes Merlot can be considered a Cabernet with training wheels, but I think that, you know, this wine is showing Merlot at its core, which is, which is that mm. red fruit, the plumminess. Uh, and the suppleness on the flavors. Absolutely, yeah. it's just the yeah. softness on the flavors, but this wine's got plenty of backbone as well. And, and I think that, th again, this is so a wine that's gone the distance. Some of that, I think, is part of the year. The 1993 lower yields kind of across the board uh, in Zin, Cab, and Merlot. Yeah. So you're talking about a, a very small vintage, uh, a yep. warmer vintage, some heat spells during harvest, and you're getting some of that extra intensity in these wines, and they've, they've really gone the distance as a result. This is really tasting beautiful now. I think the, the balance in this wine, I mean, we've been talking about it for 40 how many years now? <laughs> 41 years. Balance is so critical in these wines from the very beginning. You know, you, you know, Rory, maybe you don't even know, but I mean, my early introduction to wine, once I got interested in it as a student at Cornell and then with working at Taylor, but I ran into a crowd that were drinking great Bordeaux's at that point, and everything was about Bordeaux at that point, and the difference between a great Palmerol and or a, a, you know versus a, a wine from the Medoc, and so this was my this is my core coming forward with these wines. These wines are very very much molded in that tradition of a of a great claret. I think the, this Merlot uh, could easily be mistaken for a, a wine from. A, Santa Million or I, th I, th I think it can in certain respects, Dad. I mean, I, I, I will say it's got the, the balance and that kind of seamlessness that you love out of a properly aged Bordeaux wine. You know, the, the few very old Bordeaux wines I've had have always have that just wonderful suppleness and, and seamlessness to the texture. I think you're getting that with the 93 Merlot. You're definitely getting that balance of texture that you know, is really what you live for in these older, these older Bordeaux red wines. But I wouldn't sell yourself short. This is this is a California Merlot in yeah. the best possible way because you're getting also that core of juicy red black fruit that's just, it's still there. It hasn't gone away. Yeah, it's still carrying you, you through the You raise an interesting point. When you try to imitate yeah. what someone else is doing, you miss the mark, right? But you can be inspired yeah. by those wines. And I think I was inspired by the, the classic wines, uh, making this wine of, of Santa Emiliano and Pomerol. In, 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 and yet, you're absolutely right. This has got a, the warmth of a California summer in it still. I often call it the generosity of California yeah. All in this uh, wine, which is, you know, okay. deeply structured, deep character, and lots of flavor, but is still very intense and, and has a little bit of rambunctiousness to it. Also, it's got some, <laughs> it's got some, uh, it's got some life left. Just like it. someone who was nine years old about the time this well, wine you know, was <laughs> I did, you know, I, I basically made this wine. Oh, yeah, yeah, you, were, yeah. you stirred that pot like crazy. <laughs> <laughs> Let's talk about the cab. Oh my goodness! So the '93 mm. cap for me, Dad. This is this, so is this is a little emotional, really, in a way. <laughs> I can see why. I mean, when wines take you back this far, and, you're in, and I know you're remembering uh, the, the craziness of those years, yeah, and uh, yeah. I, I'm, you know, I've only been, you know, working with you uh, on on the professional level now for just a few years, but it's and so it's still almost unfathomably unfathomable to me to be tasting a wine this old and, and going back to that point in time where you, know, you made this wine. This, this was something that you had to make decisions on uh, all, all those years ago. I'll, and, and it's just that this wine is, is well, that's this wine thing. is chugging along. Look, I've, I've had lots of old wines and often you smell them and you go, wow, that's old. <laughs> I don't get any sense of age out of this wine other than all the beautiful characters that have developed over that period of time. But it still seems like a young wine that has had a chance to develop and become even I, more profound. Honestly, it did. I think that's a characteristic of all three of these wines where these have still that youthful core of fruit to the wine, which is unusual for a wine of this of yeah. this age even from california this is really these wines are are uh, really reflecting the generosity of, of their roots in california but showing that backbone and that sense of balance i think our wines have always had and that you've championed for for a long time and this is the payoff really because this is the payoff, this is the payoff for that attention to detail that attention to elegance and precision and you know a wine that's reflective of its roots which uh, California Cabernet, Napa Cabernet especially, you know, should be great. And, and you're kind of expecting great things out of the 93 
uh, when, you when you open this up. I would give this wine plenty of air as well. Or even better yet, you know, my favorite thing to do with these wines is pour yourself a healthy sized glass and just let it develop in the glass over time. Because yeah, this is the you. kind of wine that's gonna unfold in your glass over, yeah. the, over even the course of 30, 45 yeah, don't, minutes. Don't, don't rush into this wine if you just want to drink. This, this wine needs to unfold over an evening, and it's got the, it's got the chops to do it, I believe. I think yeah. so, because this is showing all those, uh, all those tertiary characteristics that you love, the, the cigar box, the cedar, uh, all of that kind of uh, wonderful complexity. Again, the seamlessness that we saw in the Merlot and in the Zinfandel, that kind of mm. seamlessness of texture, but still the tannin there to, to help back up uh, all that, all that generous kind of fruitiness. Just a, a hey, nice job, old man. <laughs> Three extraordinary wines from the '93 vintage, developing still in the bottle after 27 years. How cool is that? Enjoy, you guys. <laughs>